When did you come back to the island? find Fuerteventura better than Mallorca? Which is a tricky question. No, no. Mallorca is, is a special place. Okay. And how were you living these days uh, after, you know, found your ticket to the games? Many thoughts about it, but it's still like a bit uh, surreal. Or, mm. I don't know, I can't really like, understand it. Feel real like when I get there. You are here with your mom. Yep. She's visiting a few days. Did she go to to semifinals this year? No. Uh, she was at home. My dad was there. Yes. Uh, she she can't watch. She almost couldn't watch the live stream because oh, she really? gets so nervous. What about your dad? Is he, uh, did he get nervous at some point? Yeah, I could hear on the videos, like he was screaming a lot. Yeah. And he was very excited. <laughs> and yeah, he was nervous. between last year and this one uh, for qualifying? I think the main thing was I had a, this year I've had a long good uh, period without any sickness or anything like that so it's just been like I've been able to go on with good training and just follow the plan um, that's like the main thing I think the 2022 season started out going very, very well for Ella. So she had a great open, she had amazing quarterfinals. And then leading up to semis, she was sick just a week before and the preparation didn't really like go very well. Like being, her being sick kind of affected the preparation. That meant we couldn't test the workouts properly. We just had like three days where we could touch some elements of the workout and then made her, left her like very insecure about everything about the competition. And then during the actual competition, uh, some some things happened. Um, for example, she, she got like a, like two very painful no reps on the like the rope climb workout, which like left her in a deep hole where she couldn't like really manage to climb out of. So it was like a mental thing, obviously, and uh, a physical thing in, sen in the sense of she wasn't necessarily peaked in the best way she could have been for this competition. Uh, obviously she also had some physical weaknesses at that time and these were the things we focused, focused on during the preparation for the 2023 season. And then again the Open went very well for Ella, the quarterfinals were even better, so it was her best result in quarters so far uh, to this point. Uh, and then and semis, or like the preparation for semis went very well because we knew the workouts quite long before semis. And Ella is the type of athlete where when she knows what she needs to do, we can really we could really dial in the process of her competing and uh, figuring out what is the the crux of each workout. And so we practice the workouts a lot. We practice all the transitions. We practice everything like. Uh, that goes into weight selection, 
paces so she only needed to stay in her own lane and she didn't get like carried away with taking any risks because she didn't have to uh, and then it basically just came down to her execution and her execution on the competition floor in most of the things was flawless so in every workout she did what she needed to do and she executed the plan nearly perfectly and the result was qualifying to the CrossFit Games in 8th place and which is an amazing result and also I've started to work a lot on my mindset uh, yeah, giving it some attention too because it's also just as important as the physical aspect yeah this is very true she started working with a mental coach and this was very helpful for her as well, like giving some information techniques and like how to deal with the pressure you, you, you feel as an athlete. What have we planned uh, now with, for example, Ella's training, or what, so, what is the next step? So the huge difference from with like training for the games compared to training for semi-finals is we, we won't know any of the programming. So the training we're doing is like really broad. When we train for semi-finals, we knew the workouts kind of three weeks ahead. So all we did was just practicing these movements. And that makes you very like susceptible or makes the athletes very susceptible to pattern overload. Because especially with this year's semi-final programming, we had like a lot of load for the anterior shoulder. So we did like wall facing and push-ups. We did heavy bench press. We did bring muscle up and dips with a, with a rucksack and the hands and pirouettes so like the, the, the volume for the shoulders was so high um, and we only trained the same movements over and over and over again like especially the things we needed to or like our athletes needed to work on the most got like repeated almost every day basically now the wood blocks get more interesting yeah because now the training will be much more broad we spend more time outside in the heat as i mentioned earlier because it's so important we do more odd object stuff we can run up a hill we can swim in the open water we will swim in the sea we will rent some bikes and take the bikes to the mountains and do some intervals there and some like practice crossing on the bike. everything that you can that could give you like a little edge uh, on the games um, and it's also more enjoyable it's gonna be fun i'm almost a little nervous about it but in a good way i don't know really what we're gonna do but it's it brings back the creativity aspect of programming a bit more uh, because now we really have to think and like think outside the box or what, what are things that could come up uh, we get to use backboards again now um, which was something we were like only using like very very uh, little of in semi-finals preparation but like all of these things are incorporated more and more uh, now what are we gonna do uh, some intervals uh, of power cleans and echo bike. It's like one minute on, one minute off. Uh, five power cleans and max calorie echo bike. And the next next round is uh, seven calories and max power. And Ella starts on the barbell. It's five power cleans at a fixed weight, and then the remaining time she spends on the echo bike, accumulating calories. Then she rests for one minute and then she starts on the echo bike, she does 7 calories and then in the remaining time she cycles the bubble again. And then she rests one minute again and then we repeat that for 6 intervals, alternating between both parts. The weight isn't too heavy so the, the pipe reps shouldn't be like too much of a challenge but uh, the main goal of this is like bring back some intensity to the training because it will be our first like intense training piece. Uh, and then now we're just aiming for like a hard effort for six minutes or like over the course of six minutes.
yesterday. Uh, yesterday was your first session swimming, preparing for the games. How yeah. did it feel? Feel? Uh, it felt good. It was pretty relaxed. Uh, a lot of drills. And then trying to find what I need to improve. So it was a really good session. Es una gran profesional y seguro que ahora tenemos, creo que son cuatro semanas, un mes para primero cambiarle el estilo, que sea un estilo más eficiente, que pueda aprovechar toda su fuerza debajo del agua y deslizarse mucho más y sobre todo salir descansada para poder rendir fuera del agua y después trabajar el fondo y la velocidad.